One of my biggest complaints about The Sims 4 is the complete lack of attention to the game lore. It's like they just created a bunch of random Sims with no thought to their backstories or relationships to each other, much less their relationship to previous games. And don't even get me started with what they did to the Calientes. As a Sims player since The Sims 1 and a lover of the pre-made Sims, this is one of the most important aspects of the game to me. So I fixed it and gave these Sims in The Sims 4 the backstories and relationships that they deserve. Now this may not fix the myriad of other problems with gameplay in The Sims 4, but at least if anyone wants to play the game, you can do it with proper relationships and backstories amongst your Sims. And if you like what I've done here, you can download my save file down below in the description box. There will be a link for you. And if you don't like what I've done, well, I hope you find this video entertaining anyway. So the fixes I've implemented today are for the base game only. If you have other suggestions for fixes you'd like to see for other expansion packs or anything I've missed in the base game, please leave a comment down below and let me know. All right, so let's dive right in. We will start with Willow Creek. As I'm sure you know, there are four playable families in Willow Creek. The BFF family, the Pancakes, the Goths, and the Spencer Kim Lewis family. We're going to start with the BFFs. The household bio for the BFF family says Free Spirit Liberty, Cheerful Summer, and Geeky Travis are unlikely friends, and nothing can come between these three, except perhaps the growing feelings both Summer and Liberty have for Travis. Now, if you've ever played this household, you will know that none of them were friends and none of them had feelings for each other, so I fixed it. Now, when you load the BFF household in my save file, you're going to find some things going on in the relationship panel that weren't there before. First of all, Liberty and Summer both have a crush on Travis, and Travis has a crush on both of them. Now, obviously, I wanted this to be a one-sided relationship where Liberty and Summer both have a crush on Travis, and he's just oblivious to the whole thing, but unfortunately, I couldn't find any way to make this happen in The Sims 4. I couldn't find any mods or cheats that allow a one-sided relationship. If you know of any, please let me know and I will update the save file, but I couldn't find anything in my research. So instead, I just had to make it a two-sided relationship where everybody has a crush on each other. The good news is it'll make for some good drama in this household. In addition to making Liberty, Travis, and Summer all friends with each other, I also gave them some friendships and relationships outside of the household. Liberty here is now friends with Alice Kim. I thought she and Alice would make very good friends since they're both kind of free spirits. Liberty is also acquaintances with Bob and Eliza Pancakes. One of the things that I didn't like about The Sims 4 pre-made households is how none of the families had any relationships outside of their own household. It's very unlikely that you're going to be living in a town with other people and not know anyone outside of your own family. So I tried to give these Sims relationships outside of the households where I felt it made sense. Now let's look at Travis's relationships. He's standing here forlornly in the dark. And of course, he has a crush on Liberty and Summer, as I already talked about, and he's also friends with Bob Pancakes. He and Bob get along really well. Bob just sometimes needs somebody to talk to because he's not too happy at home, but we'll get to that later. And he and Travis have been hanging out, having a lot of fun together. He's also, of course, acquaintances with Eliza, Bob's wife. And finally, we have Summer, also standing alone in the dark, and she is friends with Eliza Pancakes. I thought she and Eliza had a lot in common and would get along really well. So they've been hanging out, getting to know each other, and then she's acquaintances with Eliza's husband, Bob. So everybody in this household has their own thing going on, their own friends outside of each other. And I just feel like this makes them more well-rounded and more fun to play. Next up is the Pancakes family. Their household bio says, poor, poor Bob and Eliza. Have they ever been happy? It seems there's nothing one can do to please the other. Just what is keeping this couple together? Or conversely, what is the spark that will finally drive them apart? So it's obviously alluded to here that the Pancakes have a troubled marriage. Things are on the rocks. They're not getting along well. And that sounds pretty cool. But when you load the household, they actually are in love and are friends. So I've made some changes. I'm just realizing how dark the unmodded game can be. It seems like every house I go into, it's like super dark. But anyway, here in the Pancakes household, if we look at Eliza's relationship panel, we can see that she and Bob are now no longer friends and they barely have any romance left in their marriage. Now their marriage actually is on the rocks. Are they going to be able to work this out and stay together? Or is this really the end of the marriage for them? Well, now when you play this save file, you can 
find out. And of course, we have the same relationships here. Eliza is acquaintances with Liberty and Travis. She's friends with Summer. And if we go check out Bob here, same thing. His relationship with Eliza is not good. They're hardly friends. They barely have any romance left. He's acquaintances with Liberty and Summer and friends with Travis, as I talked about before. Bob is feeling happy right now because he made friends with Travis, but underneath he's sad because his marriage with Eliza is falling apart. Next up is the Goth family. Unlike the BFFs and the Pancakes, the Goth family are a returning family from The Sims 1, 2, and 3. They are a classic family that have shown up in every one of The Sims games. Now in The Sims 4, this is an alternate timeline, so some of the timelines don't quite match up with the other Sims. I didn't want to change too much when it comes to the timeline because I wanted to keep this true to The Sims 4's alternate universe story. However, there were a few things that I thought we needed to address. So let's read the family bio. It says the Goths are an aristocratic family with a dreary aura. Between Mortimer writing macabre stories and Bella's mysterious disappearances, will Cassandra and Alexander grow up to be gloomy too? So I really like the nod to Bella's mysterious disappearances, and I actually do like what they did with the Goths in The Sims 4. They really did work with what they had in the base game, and I feel like they did a pretty good job. That being said, a lot of people have complained that they whitewashed Cassandra and Bella, so I took them into Create a Sim and made their skin darker. I also changed Bella's eyeshadow because she had this weird blue eyeshadow, so I changed it to black, and I made her an adult instead of a young adult since she does have a teenage daughter. I also changed Bella to a romance sim and her aspiration is now soulmate. Bella was a romance sim in The Sims 2 and I felt like she should still be one in The Sims 4. But I don't feel like she's a serial romantic who would want to go date a whole bunch of different sims. I feel like she is really in love with Mortimer. So I chose the soulmate aspiration for her. I also kept Bella in her career as an intelligence researcher because I really like that that could explain her disappearances. Now for Mortimer, I didn't make any changes to him because I felt like he was pretty true to himself. The only thing that I don't like is that he's in the writer career when he should actually be in the science career to be true to himself. Now in the base game, of course, we don't have a science career, so that's probably why they put him in writing. So I just had to leave him like this for the base game. Now I did make a second save file if you have get to work where Mortimer is in the science career, because personally, that's how I like to play it. I made a couple changes to Cassandra as well. First of all, I darkened her skin tone the same as I did for Bella, and I changed her aspiration from musical genius to big happy family. In The Sims 2, Cassandra is a family sim, and all she wants to do is have a big loving family, so I wanted her to be the same for me in The Sims 4. I let her keep her traits that she had gloomy and creative, and of course, she also has the domestic trait. Whenever she ages up to an adult, I will choose the family-oriented trait for her. And I'll also put her in the science career just like she was in The Sims 2. For Alexander, the only change I made to him is to change his eyebrows and recolor them to black. I don't know if this happens in everybody's game, but I know it was a common bug um, and it happened in my game that Alexander had eyebrows that were not on a preset and you couldn't change the color and they were brown instead of black. So I changed his eyebrows back to black so he looks normal. Alex is also now friends with Olivia Kim Lewis since they do go to school together. I feel like it's pretty realistic that they would be friends. Next up is the Spencer Kim Lewis family. Now I have to say this is probably my least favorite family in The Sims 4 base game. They really have no kind of drama going on. Their whole thing is basically look at this wacky name. They've got three names. All right, that's cool, I guess. So I did my best with them. Their household bio says, okay, here's the breakdown. Dennis Kim and Lydia Spencer had a daughter named Alice Spencer Kim, then divorced. Alice married Eric Lewis and had her own little girl, Olivia Kim Lewis. They live with Alice's dad, Dennis, remember, and Eric's mom, Vivian Lewis. Hey, no one ever said family was easy. So the first change I made in this household is to give Eric a job. Nobody in this house had a job when you first started playing and they have this huge mansion. I don't know how they could possibly afford it. I guess they were just living off of Daddy Kim. But now Eric works in level three of the business career as an assistant to the manager and Dennis Kim here, Man, this is dark, isn't it? Um, Dennis Kim here, even though it doesn't show it in the career panel, he is actually retired from level eight of the business investor career. 
So he should be having a pretty pension coming into the household. I like to imagine that Vivian was pretty much a stay-at-home mom for most of her life, so she, I didn't give her a career or a pension. And Alice, of course, I didn't give her a career either because I feel like she wouldn't want a traditional career. She would want to just paint on her own time and sell her paintings. Eric and Alice have a good marriage, and Alice is friends with Liberty. She's just acquaintances with Vivian. She doesn't know of Vivian that well. And of course, she's friends with her dad, Dennis, and she is friends with her daughter, Olivia. Now, I made one other change in this family to make things just a little bit more exciting because they really had nothing going on, and that is I gave Dennis a little crush on Vivian. So it's been a while since Dennis's wife has passed away, and whenever Vivian moved in with them, he found himself starting to have feelings for her. They're not very strong yet, but you can take this any way you want if you want to pursue this relationship between them. It might be a little bit weird because their kids are married, or maybe not. Vivian has found her eye wandering towards Dennis as well. And even though it's not strong yet, they could definitely have a relationship in the future. But that's all up to you. Now we're moving on to Oasis Springs. Once again, we have a four playable families in this world. If you didn't know, which I'm sure most of you do, the worlds in The Sims 4 are connected, so you can play them both at the same time. And since both of these are base game worlds, that's why I'm going through both of them. So let's start with the roomies. Their household bio says this household seems to have stepped right out of a TV sitcom. What wacky misadventures will the perky Zoe, easygoing Mitchell, uptight ladies man Jay, and intellectual Gavin suffer? for this week. Tune in and find out. Now this family is new to the Sims franchise and according to the Sims wiki this household is kind of a nod to the TV show The New Girl our new girl. I don't know. I've never seen it. But for our purposes, here are the changes that I made for The Sims 4. First of all, I made all of these Sims friends with each other. They all live together. They're roommates. I really feel like they would be friends, at least most of them. So I made them all friends with each other. Some have a higher relationship than others. I gave Zoe and uh, Mitchell here a higher relationship. I feel like they get along better then maybe they would get along with Jay or Gavin here. Where are you, Mitchell? Come here. Everybody's trying to get on the computer as soon as I play the lot. And Mitchell is also close to being friends with Johnny Zest, but not quite. That is a relationship that I added since they just live right down the road from Johnny and they're all about the same age. I especially feel like Mitchell would have a lot in common with Johnny because they both like to tell jokes and they're both quite funny. Jay Huntington here is just friends with his roommates and that's pretty much all he's got going on right now. He is non-committal, so I definitely can see him as sort of playing the field, maybe heading over to the Caliente household. <laughs> seeing what's going on over there. <laughs> Maybe even getting involved with Zoe if she is naive enough to fall for it. But for Zoe, I gave her a little crush on Johnny Zest. Now, Johnny's been hanging out with these guys lately, mostly because he really likes Mitchell. But as he's been coming over and hanging out, he's sort of started to develop a little crush on Zoe and she's developed a crush on him. So you can play that any way you want but they do make a really cute couple. And Gavin is really shy and reserved. He doesn't really have any friendships outside of his close friends that he lives with. Next is the Zest family, which is just Johnny Zest here. And his bio says, Johnny Zest has the stage name and the dream, but maybe not the talent. Disowned by the land grabs for quitting school, Johnny wants to make his own fame and fortune as a stand-up comedian. So you probably know very well that whenever you load up Johnny's household, he is no relation to the land grabs and doesn't know them at all. So so I fix this. I really love Johnny Zest's story that he got disowned by the land grabs and is out on his own now, living over here in this little trailer trying to make it as a stand-up comedian. It's a good story. The problem is it just wasn't true. It wasn't followed through. But now it is. If we look at Johnny's family tree, he is now brothers with Malcolm Landgrab and his mother and father are Nancy and Jeffrey. Now I know some people might interpret this differently that maybe he wasn't actually their son, maybe he was a nephew or a cousin, but I think saying disowned Owned, to me implies that it was he was their son and that's the way that I like to interpret the story so that's how I fixed it here. Now in the relationship panel he also knows them um, but he is slight enemies with Nancy and Jeffrey. He does not get along with them very well at all as you can imagine since they disowned him. He is acquaintances with his brother Malcolm but he barely knows him. It's up to you if you want to pursue those relationships, try to repair them, or just leave things as they are and let Johnny move on with his life. The Landgrabs are another 
returning family that appeared in The Sims 2 and 3, but this specific family was from The Sims 3. Their bio says the Landgrabs seem like the perfect family, wealthy, well-mannered, brilliant, but Nancy and Jeffrey are each hiding something. Will their secrets tear them apart or, or will they continue to build a wealthy dynasty? So I did make several changes to the Landgrab family to make them more accurate to their Sims 3 counterparts. In their bio, it does say that they're both hiding something and I think the original intention was because Nancy was working in the criminal career and Jeffrey was working as a secret agent. I didn't like this story because it wasn't true to the family, so I changed them back to how I think they should have been. Nancy is now working at level four of the business career as an assistant manager, and Jeffrey is now working at level five of the business career as a regional manager. They have always been seen in The Sims series as being business people, business owners, and that's how I wanted to portray them in my story in The Sims 4. Now I made a major change to little Malcolm here. So in The Sims 3, Malcolm was a child. He's been upgraded to a teen here in The Sims 4, and I left him that way. But I did change his personality significantly because they made him evil in The Sims 4, and Malcolm was good in The Sims 3. So I didn't like that. I changed his traits to good, and I let him keep his snob because of course he's a snob, he's a land grab. And now he has the business savvy trait because I changed his aspiration to fabulously wealthy. To me, that is much more suited to Malcolm than being dastardly or whatever he was before. And of course, they now know Johnny and remember Johnny as part of their family. Nancy and Jeffrey, of course, being slight enemies with him and then Malcolm just barely knowing him. I also like to play The Sims 4 with Get to Work. So like I said before, I've made a separate Get to Work save file. And in that save file, I made Jeffrey work in the medical career just like he did in The Sims 3. I also like to have this family own businesses with Get to Work because they're the land grabs. They have to own something, right? And finally, I've saved the best for last. You know where I'm going, the Calientes. So I'm sure you can see that I've made some major changes to the Caliente household because it just irked me to no end what EA did to the Caliente family. They were butchered and now they are fixed. So if you've never played The Sims 2 before, you may not be familiar with the original Caliente family and Don Lothario, but trust me, they're way better. So the bio says it's no longer girls only now that Caliente matriarch Katrina, but wait, Katrina's name is not Katrina anymore. Now that Caliente matriarch Nagat has moved in her mooching boy toy Dawn, with three fiery, attractive ladies in the house, will Dawn remain faithful or will he get involved with more than one Caliente woman? So the first thing I did in the Caliente family is I changed Katrina to Nagat. This is the actual name of the Caliente sister's mother, and Katrina no longer exists in my game. Now she is Nagat, and I have made her an elder. I gave her gray hair, which her hair was blonde before it turned gray. I darkened her skin tone, and I gave her a less revealing outfit, kind of like the one she was wearing, but she is an elder now. I left her traits and aspiration the same because they were pretty accurate for her actual personality. She works in the entertainment career, which I just let her keep that. That's fine with me. And I made her actually in a romantic relationship with Don Lothario since the bio describes him as being her boy toy. So they're not actually very good friends, but they have a physical relationship. Next up is Dina. I'm sorry about how the Sims are just trying to get on the computer here. Let me just press play so maybe we can get a better look at them. And it's also really dark in here. I don't have any kind of lighting mods. But anyway, this is what I did to Dina. I made her look like her Sims 2 self. And I also made her have a little bit of romance with Dawn. So they have shared a kiss before, but that's all and nobody knows about it. I also changed Dina's traits and aspiration to make her herself again. Dina is notoriously lazy and a gold digger. She's also really goofy and playful. So I changed her traits to slob, outgoing, goofball, and I changed her aspiration to fabulously wealthy. Don Lothario has also received a makeover. Now keep in mind, I didn't do anything to the structure of their faces or bodies. I left that the way that EA created them. I just gave them topical makeovers of clothing and hair. This is so dark. I'm going to have them line up outside um, after I get done going over everything so you can see them better. So I left Don's aspiration and traits. He's a serial romantic. He's active, romantic, and non-committal. Those are all Don to a T, but I didn't like the way that he looked. I didn't like the tattoos 
And so I changed his outfit to make it match his Sims 2 outfit, got rid of his tattoos and changed his hair as well. He looks goofy as heck right there. And I also made him, of course, he's in a relationship with Nigat, who is the one who moved him in. He has kissed Dina before, but he actually is quite in love with Nina. So let's talk about Nina. We can actually see her because she's outside still. So once again, I changed her hair. I changed her outfit to make her look more like she did in The Sims 2. I even changed her makeup to give her that hot pink lipstick that she likes. I changed her aspiration to serial romantic because Nina is a romance sim. She is not dastardly. I hate that they made her evil. Nina has never been evil to me. She is just a romance sim. So I changed her to serial romantic and then I also changed her traits. She is now romantic, active, and neat, just like her Sims 2 counterpart. And once again, she is quite in love with Dawn. She has no idea that Dawn has been messing around with her sister, although she is aware that Dawn and her mom have had something going on. Dawn has been whispering to her, telling her that there's nothing else between he and Nagat and that he only loves her. So I don't know if she's going to listen to that or not, but it's going to be quite interesting to play this family and see where this weird love triangle goes. So here's a better look at Nigat and a better look at Dina. And finally, I'm trying to get Don over here too so you can see him as well. And here is a better look at Don. So these are all the changes that I've made in the base game save file. I hope some of you guys can find this useful um, if you wanna download it and try to play it yourself. To me, it makes the families more fun, makes the game more immersive and makes just makes the neighborhoods feel more alive because these sims actually have connections to each other. They actually have relationships. You're not just starting out with everything default. And like I said, let me know if you have any suggestions for improvements or if there's anything else that you would like to see me fix. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Cindy and I will see you with a new video very soon.